This is a Stand Up New York Labs production, providing you decent podcasts since 2013. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe Liss. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is fitting at me. Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. It's almost Halloween. Where are you on Halloween? Where do you stand on Halloween? Well, I'm on the road, but Halloween, I believe, is a Sunday, and I'm back that Sunday, so I'm going to try to really boo it up. I think it's a Monday. Is I mean, where Monday? are you uh, emotionally? I love Halloween. Spiritually. I love the city during Halloween. I love how the air is getting colder. I love the costumes. I love the whores. Give it all to me. I'm going to do you one better. I think Halloween's on a Tuesday. Oh, really? I believe. I got a book right here, but I think it's a Tuesday Check night. the book. Booze day, if you will. Uh, I'm right about that. Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, we got Tuesday. Sh- Stick or Treat on that Sunday. So come on out to that, folks. It's going to be a doozy. Oh, yeah, Stick or Treat. That thing's going strong, huh? Nine years, baby. How do people keep... Co- For me, it's hard because I'm like, what do people keep coming up with? They well, do the same guy. They do the same thing. Some people blend people. They'll be, this is Sam Kinison as Tig Notaro. And he comes out with like tape on his tits or something. Right. You Steve know? Harvey Martin. Yeah, there you go. He's got a banjo and he fucks up a name and right, a mustache. Right, right. Steve Harvey Weinstein will be one, I'm oh, sure. Oh, yeah, that's Ooh. a big one. Maybe I'll do that. I just thought of that. I heard someone else put that out there. Oh, but... okay. Casey James or somebody, but who knows? But How yeah. about uh, Al Michaels last night? Did you see that? That was a big thing? No. These people, ah, Al Michaels, legend, hero, the greatest ever. And then uh, he said, boy, the New York Giants had a worse week than Harvey Weinstein. And now people are like outraged. They're like, this is crazy. What? And you go to Twitter, all these people are saying rape joke. He made a, what kind of, this guy makes a rape joke. And I'm like, it's not a rape joke. Yeah. It's a fucking rapist joke. Yes. It's saying that rapist is fucking going down. Also, not a rapist, by the way, Weinstein. Oh, he's a rapist. I don't think so. I think he just... Is There's he? three accusations of him raping. Oh, I thought he was just massaging, showering, and jizzing in plants. No, no, he's raped people also. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, there's accusations, certainly. Wow, uh, all right. At, I... least, at least three said rape, and uh, those things are uh, pretty wild. Yeah, that's bad news. He's a threatening... Uh, he's a piece of shit. There's no question about that. All right, I rape connected. He's a real garbage guy. But uh, here's the thing with the Weinstein from... I, like, Sarah, I guess she's a woman, so she's been, like, really into it and, like, reading all these articles and, like, what about this? Listen to this. This I is guess, crazy. I guess but, she's a woman. But to me, I just go, uh, oh, well, that guy's a scumbag. And then that's the end of it. I have the same way. Some news stories I'll really, whatever, latch on to, like, Vegas. I was like, I want to know everything about this guy. This is so fascinating. It's crazy. Right. Maybe because I'm removed because I can put myself in that spot. But to me, this was like... Oh, that guy's a piece of shit? That's crazy. Yeah. Fuck him. But everybody's got to have their hot take. What's Hillary Clinton got to say? What's Obama got to say? We got it. He's a rapist. Who cares? Move it on. Yeah, he sucks. I well, mean, not I mean, who cares, but also these wildfires, like 20 people are dead. Nobody's talking about that. A lot of people are dead. Yeah, it's all over the place. It's crazy. I, it's the apocalypse, bro. Yeah. Dog. It's bad news out there. It's uh, finally cold in New York, though. That's nice. It's cool. It's cool. It's That's so nice. But then it's going to warm right up again. Ah, it's going to be in the 70s geez. again. But how, today it feels crisp. How about this? All right. I put my jacket on today because it's a crisp day. I love a jacket. I got a piece of garbage in the uh, the pocket. I'm like, oh, I guess I'll throw this piece of paper out. It's a 20. Oh! I a 20 in my pocket. I've always heard the myth. It never happened to me. That's a great feeling. What a feeling. Found money. I don't know where or when or who or what jizzed on that 20, but it's in my pocket. I had no idea. I had a similar feeling because we get a lot of cash from spot pay, and I just throw it in my drawer. Yes. It's all card. I throw it in my drawer, and the, every once in a while, I'll pick it up these cash and count it and, and bring it to the bank. Yeah. And I had a big fold of ones. It was like sloppy ones, you know? It was like oh, yeah. I love a two or three. One. I got like eight in. There's a 50 in the middle oh, of it. I was like, what the fuck is this? A sneaky 50. Sneaky 50. Wow. Yeah, that should be a new new name for something good. Oh, that guy. You see that band? Sneaky 50. That guy's a sneaky 50. Yeah, but it sounds bad, but it's actually good. Yeah, because sneaky sounds bad. Like Weinstein is sneaky. He's yeah. Like, hey, come up. 
Did you right. see the Courtney Love thing? That was fun, though. No. That was from 05. She's on the red carpet. They're like, any oh, advice for people? I did and she's see like, that. don't go to a private party. This guy's a scumbag. Yeah. And they just laugh. It's crazy. It's funny how it's it's like common knowledge over there in the wood. Yeah, Seth MacFarlane made a joke at the Oscar presentation. That was pretty funny, too. When mm-hmm. they announced the nominees, he's like, congrats to these five women who no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein. Oh, wow. Well, I got to apologize. I didn't know he raped. So oh, he raped, I baby. I stand corrected. Big time. Uh-huh. But anyways, Al Michaels, it's like, People are upset with him. They're like, this guy's a piece of shit. What? I don't get it. It's a funny joke. Yeah, he's joking. But, that funny, you know, I mean, it's, it's whatever joke, but, yeah, you know, he's yeah. a human. Yes. Get mad at Harvey or the Giants, for that matter. Yeah, they should be playing better. They're raping. They stink. Mm-hmm. Well, the Pats improved to four and two. And, uh, uh, I hate to get raped by a Giant. Yeah. That seems tough. Yeah. Raped by anybody's a bummer, but if it's going to be, if a Giant has a giant dick, I assume Giants have giant dicks, right? Yeah. Maybe it's so big it can't go in. So that's a plus. Well, they rape children. I mean, true, true. Which I don't understand. How do you uh, get that in? I know it's a it's a real bad situation, but it happens for God's sakes. There's just yeah. monsters out there. You know, it's interesting. Whenever a girl gets mad at a guy, they always go, "Oh, you probably got a small dick." Interesting how that equates to a bad guy. You know, like um, you see some guy fucking around at a, b- a bar, like, I'll fight all of you! And some girl's like, he's probably got a small dick. Yeah. You're like, wow, that doesn't really have anything to do with how crazy he is. He wants to hurt us. I think they just want to hurt back, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. You, like, you say, uh, hey, shut up, you fucking Cunt. fat whore, and she's yeah. like 108 pounds. You're like, right, right. And has never had sex. There you go. Well, you broke it all down for me. That I'm trying sense. to break down. Break down! Go ahead and give it to me. Yeah. I had a night the other night. I went to the cellar, and I was walking in your old neck of the way. I went down to the comedy cellar, and uh, for some reason, I thought my spot was 9.55. Uh-huh. And so I looked, and I was like, all right, let me see how much time I have. And it was 10.55, so I had an extra hour, and I uh. said, well, I could go hang. But I was listening to Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers on the headphones, doing a little tribute. They're good. I walked around for a full hour in the village just blasting it. I... I I got so into it, I just said, I don't care. I'm singing along. And yes. I was like, I was doing the, ho! Oh! I was doing all this stuff. Everyone was looking at me. It was fun. It's great walking and driving music. Yeah, I would walk by people singing, you know, whatever, learning to fly. People would be like, hey, point at me. And I was like, hey, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah. It was really a fun tribute to just this, this nerd walking around singing these songs. That's great. Crazy Felt good. about Elvis. It was really enjoyable. And, uh, boy, sad to see him go. Uh, there's uh, some talk that maybe he was uh, dabbling in some things. Drugs? Well, probably, because they're like, to die at that age of that is very peculiar, and mm, they're, oh. they're digging, digging deeper. Yeah, you got to get the uh, autopsy, one of the great words in the language, don't I you like, think? I love autopsy. I love debacle. Debacle. That autopsy's a, a debacle. Yes, or wombat. Oh, yeah, we got into the wombat. I thought that was a Star Wars thing, but it's not a Star Wars thing. I, yeah, I don't know. Oh, did we do We, we did this, this whole thing. All right, all a right. bunch of nerds started oh, tweeting boy. at me, calling me a homo. Well, <laughs> what else is new? Uh, <laughs> how about this? I went to the big Chipotle. I don't know if we've talked about Chipotle in a hot min. The queso? No, I tried it once. Not a fan. People hate it. It's not great. And it doesn't work. It's like you got a chicken thing with a bunch of cheese on it. Qdoba did it right. Qdoba is better than Chipotle when it comes to queso, that's for sure. You got that right. My wife is from Texas. She's like, every time I order it, she throws a shoe at me and yes. fingers my asshole because I ask her. Okay, so what I'm saying is I went to Chipotle, and uh, it was uh, it was 10.45. They opened at 10.30. So we were like, me and a couple street kids are banging on the door like, hey, let us in. And uh, I don't know, they were playing hooky or whatever. Where did they get the money? I don't know, but they had book bags on. They were kids. These were like 14-year-olds. Oh, street kids don't have books. I thought it was like homeless babies. Wow, these were, you know, urban types. Oh, I see. You know, street oh, smarts. Oh, that's horrible. I don't know, You're where, a racist. Where's the truancy officer? You're a Weinstein. What? He's a rapist? <laughs> well, maybe. Uh, so, so we're all bang. We're all like, you know, I felt like a kid again. Yeah, we're banging on the lettuce in. Ah, we look like a couple of riffraff, you know, out there, like orphans. And, uh, so eventually this cunt comes over, goes, all right, you homos. And she lets us in. And, uh, they're all getting in line. I let them in before me. I'm the old guy. Yeah. So weird. I'm 34. I'm like, get in there, you little riffraff. Yeah, yeah. I'm tussling their hair, you know. And, uh, they go up and they order. They do the whole thing. They're super annoying and rude. They're putting their fingers over and yelling and everything. Whatever you're going to do. Over. And uh, so one of the kids, he's like the blind side kid. He was a big black kid, you know, too big for his own good. Yep. Knocking stuff over, you know. And uh, he's like, oh, shit, my car doesn't work. And I go, need me to spot you? And he goes, nah, nah, nah. And I go, come on, let me spot you. 
And he goes, ah, I can't, I can't. I go, I got it. I handed the card. Felt great. You never bought me lunch once, ever. Well, he's a kid. You bought this kid lunch? Well, I've known you 10 years. I bought you. You don't buy me lunch either. I've bought you plenty of lunches what recently. What? At what? Chipotle. Recently? When? Re- recently at Chipotle. I said all the time. We were on the road together in Phoenix. I said, I'll get this one. I'll get the next. Oh, boy. You buy this kid lunch? I'll pay you back. All of a sudden, you're buying people lunch? The strange kid street broke. kids? He was a street kid. He had dirt on his face. Wow. This is hurtful. I'm going to wow. tell everybody. I didn't see this going this way. Wow. You Boy, you got a, you're team. legendary for not buying things. I'll buy you lunch. All right. Well, I'll take it. I bought you lunch. I don't think you have. I uh, remember, because, you know, cheapo. It's cheapo, all up cheapo. here. You're the cheapest? So this I remember. Crazy. Of course I'll remember the time I bought. Oh, I remember the time you bought. I remember it well. Uh-huh. You bought with a gift card, a Chipotle gift card. Oh, well, hey, now we're getting semantics. Wow. All right, well, good for you. Good well, for you buying some lunch. strangers. I'm sorry. Jeez, I'm, I'm the worst person on earth. I'm not saying you're the worst person. I'm saying you could throw that some of your friends' ways. You want me to buy you lunch? I'll be happy to buy you lunch. I don't want any lunch. Uh-huh. I'm not a street kid. Get it for the street kid, the big guy. The kid was struggling. He was. I was finding Forrester. Wow, I struggled for many years. I know. Hey, I bought you a lot of beers over the years as no, well. No, you didn't. You I didn't. didn't. You, you were in a blackout. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh-huh. We'll have to talk about this off air, but good for you. It seems like you're turning a corner here. You're uh-huh. buying meals. I bought you beers. Uh, I, don't re- I don't think you ever have. I'm that's, pretty sure that's about it. That's ridiculous and preposterous. I'm glad this is on record. Oh, wow. Wow. Do you remember buying me a beer? A beer? I bought you a million beers when you were down and out in Beverly Hills, my friend. A Christmas beers. gifts, the works, the whole thing. This is, uh, hey, wait, wait, wait. what are we talking about here? Many beers. We've gone out drinking many times. You think you paid for every single one? No, you bought your own beer. I'm buying pitches. I'm buying rounds. That's crazy talk. All True right. crazy well, talk. I'm going to ask around. Let's, we'll ask all the, we'll all ask the friends around. in the crew about you buying all these meals. Phil Hanley was pretty down and out. We all gave him money. Did we? I did. All right. All right. You just handed him money? Yeah. Wow. All I right. think you were there. It was okay. at that coffee shop on Union Square. I don't remember that. Ah, uh, you see? Well. All right. I'll ask around. Maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm incorrect. Steel trap. Okay. That's my vagina. Well, good for you. I'm glad you bought some uh, homeless kid a meal. Clearly an orphan. He was like a, a black, uh, what is that kid? Oliver Twist. Ah. Yes. I never read that. I don't care to. I don't give a shit about Oliver Twist. You don't like Dickens? Is that Dickens? I believe it is. I confuse Annie with Oliver Twist. They're unrelated. Yeah, one's a man. I one's see. a female. Ah, I'm... Annie I loved. What? Annie stinks. What, are you crazy? Daddy Annie's one of the Warbucks? all-time classics. What? Daddy Warbucks, that's me when I'm hanging out with you in the old uh, days. Ah, here we go. It's a hard knock life, folks. Yes, it is. Uh, I guess I do like uh, The Sun Will Come Out Tomorrow. That's, that's great. That's a catchy tune. Dumb dog, why are you following me? And uh, I don't what's the other one? one? Gee, that's a little racist. <laughs> no, the dog is dumb. <laughs> I know. I've it's never no heard that tune. Dumb dog. That's a little harsh. Those were different times. Well, the dog is dumb because he's following a homeless chick. Ah. He's like, she's like, hey, get out of here. Go find uh, Warbucks or whatever. Well, in that case, there's a lot of dumb dogs out there because I see a lot of gutter trash with some canines. I heard a thing. Someone was telling me yesterday that dogs are useless without us. Like a cat can go into the wild. It's like half wild, half regular. Mm. And it can really kick some ass. But a dog without a human is just lazy. That's why they're always under cars and just falling around mm, and stuff. They have no... Nature. Independence. Oh, oh, yeah, they're not feral. Feral. Will? Yes, Colin. Ah, Firth. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know Firth. anything about these dogs. A cat to me, I don't like them. They're fucking creepy to me. Yeah, well, cats, I respect their independence and they do their own thing and they're a little sassy. But you know what's cool about a cat? You never see a cat un- Un, unhip. A cat's always cool, smooth. You never see a cat like, woo. You never see a cat like, wacky. <laughs> That's where it comes from, cool cat. Cool cat. He's a cat. You never see a cat like, flipping out like, oh, shit, what am I doing here? The only time is when you try to throw one in a tub and he's like, Meh! He's like wiggling. Yeah, you can see him. Sometimes they'll go yeah. and do that thing. But that's not so cool. That's not so cool, but at least they're kind of like, yeah, get out of here. But a dog will roll over on its ass, eat its own dick and all that shit, and, you know, eat poo and whatever. That's, you're describing me here. <laughs> um, you ever eat your own poo at all? Uh, probably after doing anal. I told you the time uh, I was pumping gas, and then I got some on my hand. I just licked it right off. 
What? Yeah. The gas? I tried to do it a bit. I just got it on me. It looked like Pepsi. So I just licked it and I was like, oh, I'm going to die. Yeah. There's all these things that you do that you're like, that's probably going to be my death. Yeah. Well, that's I, my Tom Petty. I siphoned gas once and it got all in my mouth and that was tough. I Googled a thing. This is like, this is an example of sexism. I Googled what to do if you get gas in your butt. And that's where it comes from, siphoning. Uh huh. And they had this whole article about what to do. And it keeps saying, him, tell him to do this. He should do this. And I was like, this is sexism. That's very sexist. Women could fucking swallow gas. There's some dumb women out there. Of course. Or maybe it's sexism the other way, saying women would never siphon because they're I, useless. I, that's how I took it. Oh, I see. Maybe that's why the joke never worked. Yeah. I thought it was sexist as like, hey, you dumb dude, you're fucking drinking gas, you right. idiot, these men. Why not the, uh, uh, hey, when he, she does this, you know, put the slash in there. You know, you want it even everywhere, make it even everywhere. Yeah, or you could say they. They. It's like a bathroom. It's very, it's all gender. Yes. All inclusive. Pronouns, baby. They're big. I'm pronoun. Sure. I love I'm, nouns. I'm anti. Microbial. Establishment. Ah. Oh, there you go. Mac Weldon. Free I got plug. Mac Weldon's on. Check it out. New ones. Ooh. Those I'll, are nice. Between you, me, and the lamppost, I think my wife is, is into them. Oh, really? Yeah, I walk around with these briefs, and they got little checkers. Uh-huh. And I'm in pretty good shape. I look like an old pugilist, and uh, I think they're sexy. She rubs my butt. It's a whole thing. Wow, that's but, fun. You got to do it. And uh, mine are like, but the only thing is they're very uh, visible with those pee drips. Yes, that's like I, true. It's embarrassing. I I go to the piss before bed, and I walk out, and I got a whole Mickey Mouse situation. Yeah, it's yeah. all these dripply drips. I've been there. It's like your dick sweating. Uh, it's embarrassing. But then, I mean, what's a girl gonna do? She's gonna give you shit. I mean, girl underwear look like oh, it looks like somebody snot. Yeah, it looks like somebody just uh, sneezed in there. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so it's a variety of colors. It's yellow, white, red. Some yeah, brown is in there. My mom's underwear looked like a like an old petri dish. It's, it's insane. Uh, it's a bad scene. It's graffiti. <laughs> It was like pond scum in there. They had like uh, those little pieces of white stuff. I don't know what that was. Well, I think what happens is it, it's self-cleansing. It's like an oven. Yeah. Wait, what? Self-cleaning oven. Is that an invention? That's Did a, you just come up with that? That's a big thing. That's the thing? Shellfish knows. I got to get a self-cleaning oven. Yeah. Because mine know. has all this cheese and it burns and smoke like billows out. It looks like, a, you Wait, know. A, Sarah, the oven. The oven. It oh, looks like okay. fucking house switch in there. There's just uh, <laughs> black smoke and it stinks. Screaming, a lot of ash. Yeah, it's real bad. I mean, yeah. uh, my cat's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Who put cookies in his mouth? Uh, yeah, that vagina is a kooky contraption. It's a, it's a weird, weird cave of love in there. There's all kinds of jizz and old condoms and wrappers. It seems like a real bummer being a woman. And I was thinking of it. It really is a thing. This Weinstein started to spark this whole Me Too movement on mm. Facebook. And I can't think of a woman that doesn't have a story of some guy being a scumbag. It's a real bummer, yeah. It's crazy talk. It's weird that women like us still. That's what I was thinking. I'm yeah. like, there's still women out there. Like, I was talking to a woman last night. She's like, yeah, I'm just looking for a guy like this and that. I'm like, it's surprising you're still looking for a guy, but that's the sex. It's biology, you're yeah. attracted. It's in there. That sneezy pussy needs a hard cock in there. But the cool thing is, is uh, if you're a good guy now, you're like a good guy. I know. That's the thing. You just got to wait it out. Like, I feel like I could fuck everybody now. Wow, let's slow down. Well, if you know, if my wife uh, died of sure. the oven situation or yeah. whatever. Hot box. I feel like now I got a little dough. I got some, uh, my teeth are still a mess and the forehead's a thing, but. Uh, you're all right. You got a good body and great undies. Good body, nice undies. I got some things going for me. I appreciate that. Great hair, great frames. Bad toenail situation. Wow. Big forehead, weak jawline, weird Keep teeth. Keep socks on. OCD, all that stuff. But step, but I'm very nice. I'm very kind. Very nice, very kind. Giving to charity, uh, comedian, successful. You I just, did it. I just signed up for the PBS thing. They fuck you. They make you. They give you the first free Vietnams for free. I'm watching those. Yeah. Episode five. They're gonna hit you. Oh, is that right? You gotta start donating monthly to these sons what? of bitches. Yeah. Oh, these. I'll, I hate them. I'll cover you. All right, thanks. I'll cover the black kid. Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's a hell of a picture, but that's how they get you these public broadcastings. Well, it's quality art. But I think Trump's trying to get rid of all the PBS, the public. What? Yeah, that's what I heard. Damn. He's not good. You can't have a goddamn thing in this country without somebody putting their sticky fingers in your asshole. Yeah. Well, we better get to some stories, because oh, once now geez. we did the Trump thing, so now I'm going to get shit... For the, the Trump thing, and they're going to go, no story, you story, you Trump fuck. Uh -huh. Can we just point out, though, you got to admit it's funny that he said he met with the president of the U.S. Virgin Islands. I didn't hear what's this. He went into this whole speech. He's like, well, I did this, I did that, and I met with the president of the U.S. Virgin Islands. 
That's him. <laughs> he is the president of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Oh, that is good. He claimed he met him. I'm like, that's hilarious. Wow. And that's the thing. Be a Trump supporter, blah, blah, blah. blah. Be a, but admit that some of these are fucking hilarious. Yeah, he's a kook job. I mean, it's, you can't deny it. It's funny. It's funny. He's a whack. He's a goof. Yes, a goof. He's a big goof. But anyways. Um, Some say oaf. What is oaf? He's an oaf. Never got I think that's oaf. a big oafy. Yeah, oaf. Oaf is odd. Like It's kind of like beef and... Uh, oats. Beef and oats. <laughs> beef and oats. That great, could be our music team. Great comedy team, yeah. Beef and oats in the morning. You ever think about doing different stuff? Maybe playing songs or sketch or nah, something? I cross my mind and I, I laugh and I go, fuck you. The stand-up. I can't think of anything else. I got uh, nothing. Who needs it? I feel, I can't say this, and this is going to sound real douchey, and we're going to get a lot of letters written. It's Man. not going to be worse than the Trump, the rape, and the cheap. Well, I was on the train today, and I saw this guy, and he was like an SNL writer. He wrote for Seth Meyers, one of these writer types. You know him? He knew me, and I think we'd met. I, I wasn't, it was a little hazy, so he'll probably hear this and kill me. But uh, he was on the train. He goes, oh, Mark Norman, I love your stuff. I saw you on this. And I was like, yeah, what's up, man? How you doing? He's like, yeah, you know, still writing for, I can't remember what he said. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I, I remember immediately feeling better than him. I'm a comedian, baby. Right. I'm a comic. You're out there in the writer's room, and you're doing the Lord's work. You're typing shit up. You're doing Harvey <laughs> Weinstein jokes. Great. Good for you. But you got a nine to five. You're wearing a tie right now. I'm a comic. I'm going to a podcast, and I'm doing shows at night for people. And you have a team with writing. You can lay back a yes. little bit. You have a bad week. You're like, oh, that is funny. Right. You can kind of make it look like you contributed. Oh, what if it's, instead of sandals, it's shoes? Yeah, exactly. And you're they're like, okay, yeah, sure, yeah. Exactly. You're making a B joke into an A joke. Whatever. Harvey, Harvey Hurricane, whatever you got. Oh, oh, Puerto Rico throwing paper towels. I got my own point of view. I'm myself up there, and I'm dirty. I'm edgy. I'm gay. You are gay. Yes. So that was just that was a little little fun, and you know, hey, I couldn't do the comedy writing. I probably couldn't do it. That's not my bag, baby. Yeah, take that, writers. Yes, but it's hard. It's hard. I'm like I'm sitting here going. I'm looking at my notebook, going. Hurr. Oh, hey, ah. tell me about it. But you can't go on strike now, can you? No, no union. And we don't have health care. We're out there. We're warriors. Oh, you can't scare me. I'm sticking with the union. Sing it, sister. Until the day I die. Love Tom Petty. But, yeah, so where you been, what's shaking, who's gay, and what's fat? I'm looking at this. I was in D.C. I got to take a moment here to talk about the fans we have. Oh, tell me about it, but you go. Unbelievable. I got, first of all, I don't even know this guy didn't sign it. I got the tea box, the tea, tea kettle box. thing. Uh-huh. We were here. Oh, yeah, the box. tea kettle, yes. It was a tea kettle. He wrote these sweet messages, and then uh, it was like page one of two, one of three, page two, page three. I couldn't find page four, so mm. I don't know if he signed it or what. You might have tweeted at me. I don't know what your name is, but I'm using that tea kettle left and right, up and down. Oh, great. It's amazing. I'm putting out my oven fires with the thing. Yeah, put and, the uh, vagina out. Big box of jade citrus. I'm loving it out there. Yeah. And these fans, they're so kind. They listen. I was in D.C. I did a joke. I was like, boy, I drink tea. And I just heard some guy go, jade citrus. And I was oh, like, oh, shit. It's That's unbelievable. Awesome. And then another guy in Saratoga Springs gave me a guitar pick. From guitar legend Mike McCready of Pearl Jam. Wow! He threw it to him back in May of 2010. What? I was at the show. He's like, I got two of them, so I brought it to you oh, in a bag. Oh, that's lunch. It's kind. It was what? very sweet. He got two picks? Two picks. Holy, I need a toothpick. <laughs> yeah, hey. Chipotle, barbacoa. Uh, uh, so he gave that to me, and it's the nicest gift I've ever gotten in my life. I wanted to blow the guy. I don't know what to say. I don't even know his name. But, wow. uh, so shout out to you. Yeah, two pick Johnson. You're a hero. Great, great guy, and uh, I used the plastic bag, too. I saved some goodies in there. I got the guitar pick on my wall and uh, put it in my butt. It was a whole thing. Well, it's funny you say that because I just had some Tuesdays. By the way, we got to talk to Gomez because the shirts are, are piling up. People had some shirts out there, so I think people are buying. Yeah, I haven't gotten a check for a shirt since the 87s. Yeah, it'd be nice. So, but there's a bunch of shirts out, even though the the middle act, uh, Bill Bouchard, who's fucking hilarious. I oh, really? Really funny, like. Murdering. I was like, I gotta follow this guy. Killer act out of a uh, den, uh, Detroit. A couple of frogs on the show, huh? Isn't that a word for French people? Yeah, it's a Navy Seal also. Well, Bruchard sounds French. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Norman, he, look, he looked Bruchard. a little uh, froggy. All right. So yeah, great guy. But he was like, look at these two guys wearing the same T-shirt. Grow the fuck up, faggots, or whatever he said. Oh, like, wow. I was like, oh, he has no idea that they're they're you know the the Chipotle shirts, you know. But uh, one guy. Forgot his name. He saw me at Rooster Teeth Feathers. Great guy. Tall, beefy, blonde guy. You've probably seen him, too. He gave me a Chipotle and a bunch of Adderall. Wow. He was like, hey, go nuts. Do you Jesus. like drugs? Here you go. I was like, thanks. 
So he was cool. And then uh, this other guy, Chris, came up. He had a freeze pack. What do you call that? Like they suck the air out of it? Air throat? What do you, air? Freeze pop. No. They take the air out of the bag. Oh, uh. You know what I'm talking about. They suck it right out, so it's it's real I tight. know people like that. They take the air out of the room. Yes. So uh, he had this. What, what is it exactly? It's a bag. It had mushrooms in it. Shrooms. Ah. But it was froze. It was sucked up, so it was like, you know. Tight. I see. It looked very professional. He's like, these are crazy. These will fuck your shit up. And so I had a whole thing. I don't want to get too into it, but I was talking to these comics backstage. I'm like, this guy, Chris, he grows this. It's like his business. And they go, well, you can't bring that on the plane. I go, oh, shit, you're right. So I had the hotel mail them to me. So I got shrooms in the USPS. Wow. Right now it's in a truck coming to my house. Isn't that still dangerous? Is it? I don't know. Well, they got the freeze Shelby's pack. Shelby's saying no. Shelby's saying no. It's like that Mitch Hedberg joke. I love the FedEx guy because he's a drug dealer and don't even know it. Oh, okay. I don't know anything about drugs. Yeah, I don't know much either. But uh, they were like, don't bring it on the plane. That's 10 to life, motherfucker. Man, imagine if you went to prison. Holy hell, I get some cred. Yeah. Finally. You'd get some shred in your bottom, too. Yeah, my hot box. Does everybody get raped? How does it work there? I think I would, for sure. Yeah, it depends on what jail you go to, I guess. Yeah, well, I'm not going to a, a high end. No, I think it would be a whatever. Yeah, I think it would be minimum because it's not you're not intent to uh, give out or whatever the whole yeah, thing. First yeah, first crime, that's horse true. shit. You're I'm white. Not, I, I'm white. I'm not like a violent person, you know. Right, right. Sarah and I got to drive by on a train from uh, D.C. to New York. We saw a little prison yard. Ooh. It was fun. It looked like fun. The working out, the basketball. Yeah, it was that whole thing. It was like right along the tracks in, uh, I don't know, Pennsylvania. It was the Philadelphia or Pennsylvania Correctional, whatever the fuck. But it looked like uh, it had the big barbed wire and stuff. But they were all sitting on picnic tables, playing hoop, working out, chatting. Whoa, it looks great. Cool. The yard. And I saw a couple of whites and blacks mixing and matching. I, I think like times that. have changed. Diversity, baby. We're progressing. Yes, race relations are getting better. I think so. I, I, talk, I had a great talk with Sil Vince last night. Ooh, he's great. I love Will. He's as good as it gets, that guy. Great egg. Just a real neutral square egg. Good dude. Great guy. and uh, He's got no agenda, no bias. He just, what, if you got a good point, he'll, he'll go, yeah, that's a good point. Hell of a body. Great bod, huge dick. So when do the mushrooms arrive? I don't know. I guess they'll be here uh, maybe Monday or so. Or that's exciting. Very exciting. I, it just just being on that airplane, being like, ah, they're in the air, or I'm in the air, and they're on the road, coming to me. I don't have to worry. You know, you know when you go through security, just like, oh, my God, please don't find them. Yeah, one time I went to security high one time with our old pal Tom Dustin, and it's one of the worst experiences of my life. Oh, like it's fly, you get to the other side, it's amazing. Yeah, but that uh, process, I wanted to take my own uh, life. I it's... wanted to just be like, I'm, I'm high, I can't do yeah, it. Yeah, it's all business in the airport. There's guys with guns, there's dogs. It's crazy. It's all and security. I'm not even committing a crime anymore. I have no possession. I didn't have the weed. We smoked it. Right. So I'm just a guy who's high. You can't even get in trouble for that. That's I don't true. Think. I don't think you can. Nowadays, you can't get in trouble for anything. Yeah. So tell me about D.C. because I saw your pose. It, 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 you really looked like you were showing some love. Chocolate Cite. Yeah. Have you done the draft house I've in done D.C.? The old, I've done the old one. This one is like a different thing because the other one is like a – it's great also, Arlington. But it's but big. It's a big 300-seater, high ceilings. It's a movie theater. There's like lounge chairs and like bar and drinking. The D.C. draft house is like this little black box theater. It looks like this. Yeah. It's amazing. Wow. And uh, it's like 130 seats or something like Perfect. that. Perfect. No waitresses. It's just like a go to get your beer and sit down. I like that. So there's no distraction, no noises, no nothing, no tables, no snacks. How do they make money? I don't know. Huh. I was paid handsomely, too, I have to say. Interesting. But uh, we had people. We drew. He said, uh, he's like, this is one of the best weekends we've ever had. Whoa. We got Tuesdays coming out. I mean, we sell, baby. Is that right? The Northeast, we're doing great. I think Philly, D.C., New yes. York. Yes, yeah, Chicago, too. The, yeah, and Chicago. I mean, there's just so many people there. That's um, funny you say that, because uh, Mark Ridley, the owner of the Comedy Castle, was like, these are great numbers, i got to say. Yeah, it's exciting. We're, so thank you, Tuesdays, and keep spreading the word, for God's yes. sake. Yes! Praise Allah! I mean, I think it helps that we're doing Ari's, we're doing Legion of Skanks, we're doing Bobby's, I'm on Jim and Sam, you're doing this, it's cooking! Things are cooking, and kindly! We're, we're funny! And funny people! Don't forget that we are funny. Yes, horrible movie. Uh, funny people? Yeah. Yeah, I have a hard time... Uh... People were like, oh, M&M's in it. I don't give a shit. Blow me. It stinks. I want comedy. Um, I saw the Meyerowitz stories yesterday. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't try it. Oh, really? I was nervous. Ooh. 
That's some good old fashioned anti Semitism right there. That hurts. Uh, that's it's good. It's great. Is it? You like it? Oh, great. I love the Jews. It's fun. It's, uh, but here's the thing. And I, between you, me, and the lamppost and the table, uh-huh. Sandler's getting all this prey. And I feel weird because we have friends that are mutual friends with sure, Sandler. Sure. So I'm not that far removed from Sandler. Right. So I don't want to just trash him. Oh, God. He's good in the movie, but like, there's a couple parts where like he gets. Big, and he just sounds like he Sandler. He does the same shtick, yeah. It's that, like, or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, he's and got it three ticked moves. me out of the movie. Right, right, right. But it's definitely his best performance. But Stiller's amazing, Hoffman's amazing, and the women, who who cares what their names are, they're amazing. <laughs> I can't wait to watch. It's really great. All right, I got burned before with Sandy Wexler and that other horse shit he did with the action movie, so I, I well, couldn't this, do it. This is more of a bomb back than it is a Sandler. I like a bomb. Bomb back is good. Back's good. Baby got back. The bomb back. Francis High love. But I'm a big, uh, you know, I'm a big fruitcake. I like an uh, indie fruit. It's I'm a, into it. It's a good, it's a good flick. And, uh, Squid and the Whale is just based around jizz. The whole movie is jizz. I love jizz. Yeah. I really love it. Jeff Daniels going, put me in your mouth. Holy shit. Don't you want just jizz all over you, kind of? Now you're saying no? All right. <laughs> Enough, that pause I, was long enough. I like a, see, that's funny because you don't like a squirter. But you like jizz. I don't dislike. I like a squirt. I want a squirt. I've never oh, had a squirter. Oh, okay. I love a squirter. But it's piss. I would love to get fucking peed on. And Really? Well, they can pee on you anytime. No, I want a squirter. That's my big thing. Oh, I want okay. multiple squirts. Because I... some guy tweeted at me. He's like, you got to change your fantasy, pal. He's like, it sucks. It's horrible. <laughs> what the fuck? You telling me what I want? Fuck you. I hate that shit. Well, he's like, well, he's like a thing of like when you want something and you can't get it. And uh-huh. then someone's like, don't worry about that because it's dead. It's like when someone doesn't get new faces, you're like, don't even worry. Oh, it's bullshit. I see. I see. Okay. I thought but he was like, I don't sec- like your fantasy. He might secretly be like, but it's the best time I've ever had in my life. It's amazing. I, lo- I, got- I was eating a girl out and she scored it once. Oh, that's what I need. Yeah. It got me right in the teeth. I've ever hit my teeth like a backboard. Like a, uh, what do you call that? A pick. A water pick. A water pick. pick. You're yes. not throwing away my water pick. <laughs> I got a water cunt right in my face. Well, that's what I want. And I want just, I- my reverse bukkake, we've talked about it. That's all I want in my life. But that. But yeah, all right, all right. I want seventy-five women just blasting me, like like that bucket on the fucking door. They that old oh, trick. Oh yeah. I want that, but with pussy. You I open to... the door and then a woman just squirts right in right, my hair. Just placenta all over you. That makes placenta. Yeah. Tuh. Um. Yeah. That's, where are uh, we in this? That's, uh, so you're in DC. <laughs> you got oh, just yeah, on. I'm in uh, D.C. It's just a great city. I love D.C. Yeah, it's a I just special place. Love it. You walk around and uh, it's beautiful. I couldn't stop thinking about that cigar I out just, there. I was going to say that. That was one of the ha- that was like the last time I was there. Well, like I said, I did the festival underground fest. But anyways, I have such great. Me- I have nothing but great memories in D.C. Yes, I love the big hunt. The- we did so many Louis shows there. The special was there. The cigar, the whole thing. The orange. Oh, the orange, classic. The orange, the missing the shirt, the ba- the basketball game. We had a good times there. Time of my life, and uh, so Sarah and I went down. We do the big. It's just a two person show, seventy minute show. They want seventy minutes. Wow. We do twenty and fifty. We're out. I love it. And then Saturday, seventy nine. So we're done at like ten twenty. Damn. Ton of Tuesdays came out. I just I can't thank you enough. You say the sweetest, kindest things. Comedy artwork came by. Oh, uh, yeah. That guy is the best. Great guy. Sorry I didn't get to talk to you more. I was being a little occupied. He's a mensch. But uh, good guy. And the girls that run the, or the women that run the uh, place are just so kind, oh, so really? nice. Sean Joyce came and hung out. I love Joyce. Just a good guy and uh, just gets it. Fun, funny guy. He gets it. Great times. Good oldies. We go to uh, Shake Shack. Shake Shack is my favorite cheeseburger I've ever had in my life. You love a shack. I fucking love Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, or Radio. Oh, Radio Shack. I never cared for Radio Shack. I don't Shack. care for it. I never liked it. I did, never, it was never anything in there for me. Nothing for me? I don't need a <laughs> remote control airplane. <laughs> it's just, I would go in there and go, this isn't where I need to be. Yeah, then they go, what's your phone number? Fuck you. I'm, the, I'm, I'm buy, I buy batteries. The stuff I did get, that, the stuff that Radio Shack that I would want, they have at fucking Record Town or whatever. You know what I mean? I'm like, they got CDs and the goods. You got the <laughs> shit. Record Time. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Record Time was big. Oh, I don't know, Rez. That must be an East Coast thing. I think so. All right. Uh, I thought it was just a, a generic thing you made up. No, no. By the way, it's about 175 I'm degrees sweltering. in here. <laughs> I got hot flashes in here. My hot box is cooking. My Mac Weldon's fell off. <laughs> you got that right. They're in my mouth. Um, hey, hey, you know what's great? You know what I love? What's that, Fatty? I love Zip Recruiter. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, a good zip. It's as good as it gets. 60 seconds. 
Oh boy, don't read that part. I re- I always read the wrong parts, but no, but in all seriousness, yes, in all Barkley, you gotta uh, you gotta uh, get into the zip recruiter business. You My God, you if you're it. hiring, you know the quality hires keep your business moving forward, but you also know it can take a lot of time to find the right candidate for the job. So, so true. if you're hiring, you gotta know where to post the job and the best candidates to find the best candidates. Take it, Mark. Take it, sister. Jesus. No wonder 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. One day? ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike any other hiring sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on the right candidates finding you. It finds them. ZipRecruiter puts its smart matching technology to work, actively notifying qualified candidates about your job within minutes of posting so you receive the best possible matches. Row. Yes, row indeed. And right now, my listeners can post, our listeners Thank can you. post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Tuesday. Slash Tuesday, ZipRecruiter.com slash Tuesday. One more time. You heard it here, folks. ZipRecruiter.com slash Tuesday. Thank Gotta you. Gotta do it. And hey, if you're using the Laughable app, make sure to subscribe directly to both of us, Mark Norman, Joe List, so you never miss us on a podcast. Yes. Even if you aren't using Laughable, you should start. It's the best rated podcast app in the App Store. Go download it. Yes. Android users can sign up for the wait list. At laughable.com slash Android. If you've been enjoying the app, go leave them a five star review in the app store. You got to help these people out here because they're really doing the Lord's work. It's a good app. Leave them a five star lunch. And uh, you Android people, get on board with society and get an iPhone. But still, we got you in there. So yeah. enjoy it. It's a sneaky 50. That's right. We should use the other term as the bad one, the finger over the glass. How'd you say it earlier? Uh, the people that point when they oh, order. Yeah, yeah. I hate those people. Yeah, what did I say? Point over Fingering, the glass. Fingering, a finger glass. over. Finger over is not bad. We need a stenographer here. Yes, too bad it's not recorded. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you got to get in there. It's a hell of a uh, spot to be. And so we go to Shake Shack. Delicious burger. I got a double burger. The burger. bun is soft and yes. moist, but not falling apart. Yes. Really salt. Another free ad for somebody here. That's right. And uh, so we go there Saturday night. We do the shows, two shows. I mean, all the shows are great. Yeah. Every show, great. Not wow. one issue, no wow. heckling. It's just like beautiful and That's a lot rare. of a lot of twos gays. Yes. And they weren't too PC. Usually DC is very PC. Yes, it is PC. DC. Washington, PC. Yes. Joy, Sean Joyce explained it to me, which made sense, because a lot everyone moves there to work on these nonprofit for a cause. They're like, mm. I'm going to cure Africa. Yeah. I'm going to save AIDS. Right. Or whatever. And so they go there, and then they're like, what would you just say? Like They're spending like 50 hours a week you know, trying uh-huh. to end racism or right. end climate change. Right. And then so you're up there like, ah, oh, boy, a hurricane hit my mother's dick. And they're like, what would you say? Uh-huh. You talking about hurricanes? It's a good point. They're going to get us kicked. And you're like, oh, shit, sorry. But don't they, I mean, they're, they're living in Trump's backyard, those people. So is there like an overcompensation of like, hey, hey, we hate him, so now we're going to be angrier when you say this? Part of me thinks Trump helps because he's up there like, I grabbed her by the pussy and mm. uh, I met the president of uh, Illinois. <laughs> right. And so now I can go up there and go, yeah, I fucked my wife in the asshole. And uh, like, that was nothing. And they're like, that's great. Good for you. Yeah. I didn't, by the way. Kudos. Um, she won't fall asleep. Um, but anyway, so we were in uh, D.C. And then after the second show, Saturday night, we go over to Shake Shack. We're going to see Halloween at midnight. Ooh, I love it. Yeah, they're playing Rocky Horror Picture Show, but that sells out because it's like a thing. Sure, cult class. So we go to Halloween. We got to buy the ticket to Halloween. We leave the show. We walked. Great walking city. We go to Shake Shack. Order my double burger again. You know me. I have something I like. i got to have it 150 times. Get that right. And so I uh, went to In-N-Out every day of my honeymoon. So we ordered the Shake Shack. Then we're sitting there waiting, and it's like a law. It's Saturday night. It's a long line. Everyone's drunk. And all of a sudden, around the corner, you just hear, where the fuck is my cheeseburger? Get me my cheeseburger. Uh-oh. And uh, that accent sounded off. It was a gay guy. I was trying to do oh, gay, but it sounded like a black woman. Yeah, that was from 227. Yeah. <laughs> really bad with voices. Well, more of like a... Hello, where's my cheeseburger? Yes, it was that kind of thing. Thank that was, you. It was somewhere in between. We split the difference. All we would right. have it because he was kind of, he was, I think, a, a, a power top ah, or a bear or something. A twink, an otter. No, it wasn't a twink because a twink is like, uh, uh, Shelby's a twink. Shelby's a big, fat, gay twink. Yes. Uh, this guy was like, he had a big belly and he looked tough-ish. 
Okay. But all of a sudden, he just starts snapping at these poor, like, 15... The people that he was yelling at sounded more like the other people that I just did the impression of. Noted. So they're all like, what? And yeah. the guy's like, I don't know, it's coming. He's like, that guy, I was here before that guy. Jesus. I got it that time. Yeah. He's like, I was here before this guy. And then, which is so crazy, he starts screaming. <laughs> so like the Scarecrow from Wizard of Oz. And then the manager walks over, and he's like a huge black guy. Oh, I mean, this guy's boy. like 6'7", 380. Yeah, like one of those guys. He's a radio shack. He's huge, this guy. So he walks over, and he just goes, I'm sorry, what's the problem? Which oh. is so fun to have like that, that guy that's clearly like... I will. I could kill you. Yes. So he's just talking like, I'm sorry, What? Uh, what's the issue? He's like, I want my burger. I want my burger. <laughs> and like his boyfriend looked kind of uh, Mateo-ish. They're both uh, like uh-huh. big guys. This guy's ripped. He's got like a, look like an old, he looks like uh, Michael Douglas and falling down. Oh, older gays. Yes. They were like in their 40s. Okay. And he's like, this is crazy. I've been here all day. And so now everyone's like getting their cameras ready. Yes. And then there was a table of black women and they just loved it. They were like, ah! <laughs> they were hitting the table, dying, laughing. It was yeah. fucking, it was like deaf comedy jam for them. They loved it. Wow. So this big other white guy, he's yes. sitting there. He's like an innocent bystander up until now. Uh-huh. He's wearing a suit, and he just goes, why don't you shut the fuck up, dude? Oh, shit. I and, love that. Yeah, and the guy turns around. He's like, who the fuck are you? He's like, it's a burger. He just kept saying it's a burger. It was Whoa, so funny. Good for him. He's like, it's a burger. Shut the fuck up. Wow. But, which is kind of annoying because I'm like, you actually don't need to be involved. Yeah, but it was yeah. also fun. He might have some... What, what do you think his deal is? Is he just had a bad day? You think he wants to shut down this gay? I think he was just annoyed. Like, we're all... Because this guy's crazy. He's yeah. just screaming about a cheeseburger. Right. And uh, he's just an asshole. I mean, this guy's a fucking asshole. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, he's just a fucking... Ir- irrational, cunt ridiculous. asshole. Yeah. Screaming at a bunch of minimum wage cheeseburger people. Sure. Being like, this is crazy. This is wild. And, and so the guy's just like, why don't you shut up, man? It's a burger. And then he turns around and he's like... Look, shut the fuck up. Look at you. Shut the fuck up. And then the guy stood up. So now they're like face to face. And then there's like, they're all huge. There's like three huge guys. There's a huge black guy. Yeah. Huge gay guy. Huge white guy. The white guy was big? He was huge. Really? Yeah. And like, he's in a suit and he's like, look at you and your fucking outfit. He didn't even have a good singer. Right, right. He's like, your outfit. And then the black ladies are just like, oh, shit. They're yelling. (laughs) And like, Sarah and I are laughing. It's so crazy. The whole thing's a crazy scene. Yes. And uh, they're yelling and yelling, and finally he gets, like, his burger, and then he walks over, he puts his tray down at, at his table, oh, God. and he walks back over to the other big guy. He was saying, it's just a burger. Yeah. Why don't you shut up? And he's now sitting. He's waiting for his burger, and the, the big, gay, crazy guy, he leans into his face, and he starts, like, sit, talking to his face. Oh, shit! And this guy had so much, like, patience. He just sat there, like... They were all just sitting there, and he took his, uh, he had a little, um, he was wearing a suit jacket with a little hanky. Uh, yeah, yeah, pocket square. He pulled the hanky out. The gay? The gay. He's like, Whoa, what do you think about that? Oh, that's fighting gay. And then the other big guy, he's just smiling. He's just laughing, looking at him, shaking his head. So someone in there, I think they all maybe knew how to fight. Because the people that know how to fight, they never fucking yes, fight. right, right. So they're all just doing this thing. But the gay then, guy was clearly trying to get something going. I mean, you don't pull a pocket square for no reason. Yeah, he was just trying to be an asshole. And then the people next to him, they, I think he thought this guy was with them, but I don't think he was later on. He started yelling at them. He's in everyone's face. He's, and you couldn't hear what he was saying because he was just talking quietly oh now in the person's face. And the guy was, and the big guy's like, okay, all right. Whoa. Have a good night, sir. Uh huh. And then he's like, what a fucking asshole. Like, once he walked away, and then everyone's just staring at this guy. I'm yeah. staring. He's staring back at me, and I'm like, what are you? I'm going to keep staring at you. You're crazy. Wow. So then eventually I got iFood, and then like maybe 10 minutes passed, and like this big security guy, they must have a security guy that works for all these local businesses. Uh-huh. He had a gun, though. He was like a, a legit security. He's and he came and like, he's like, you got to leave. Dude. You can't be in here, which was kind of fun. Thank God. To watch him get kicked out. Yeah. And then uh, his boyfriend just sat and finished his burger. Well, I don't know where the <laughs> other guy went. He must have just walked away. But you could tell the boyfriend was like, oh, fucking Todd, you idiot. Yeah. Uh, he probably deals with that all the time. They go to fucking build a bear. And he's like, where's my bear? <laughs> <laughs> get out of here and have one. Place we don't have a conniption, you fucking homo. Well, it was just the whole thing. It was just crazy. Also, Shake Shack is not fast food to me. You get a little mm. buzzy. You go sit down, and it buzzes. They have beer. They have beer. Yes. It's like a, it's a, it's not a, a quick thing. So yes. it's like he stood at the counter the whole time, and he's right. like that guy. And then the the big uh, manager guy, the big black guy, was like, "Sir, he was not here before you." 
Like, oh, wow. I, I, you weren't here before him. Yeah. He was like, I was here before him. He's like, you were not. The guy just kept his cool, you know? Yeah, the guy just sounds like a, a classic nut. Yeah, he was a real nut. And, like, all these guys are like, you know, they're probably, like, inner city D.C. guys that are like, I'm not going to be in a thing over this. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? It's like, the guy's like, all right, sir, take it easy. Yeah. Just called security. But it was quite a quite a sight. That is something. Wow. What a little theater you saw. It was com- something else. But uh, And then we went and saw Halloween, which was great. And then there was another kook there. Sorry, I'll wrap this up. No, 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 no. This, is, this is riveting. So we went to uh, Halloween. It's so fun. All the people are lined up for Rocky Horror. And they're all in like these sexy outfits, you know, the fishnets and like the bras and the things. And, yeah. Uh, they're all lined up. Halloween's a much smaller. It's not as big a deal. But we go there, and uh, it's exciting. Midnight movies, scary. You try to do Halloween-ish things, get into the holidays. Love you it. Know? And then uh, there was another kook. Uh, this is another African-American, uh, black, whatever the right term is. But he looked, uh, he had the long dreads, and then he had like one of those white cap. I don't know what it was. Like a, uh, a skull cap. Maybe a, a skull cap or something. Might have been do raggy. I'm not was, sure. Was it was it uh, elasticy at the bottom? It was a little elasticy. That it might... almost looked like a Muslim type of cap. Yes. It didn't seem Muslimy to me. I, I don't think know what a skull cap. I think it was a skull cap. But uh, I'm just painting a picture, by the way. I don't uh, judge. Sure. But he started acting pretty kooky. Uh huh. He comes in a little late. It's also a Halloween movie. DC is a, a real murdery gun place. Yeah, oh yeah. And movie theaters are a target. It's also like a Halloween movie at midnight. Right, right. So it's a little. That city's got a little stank on it. Oh, big stank. It's not a necessarily a safe place always. Mm-hmm. So we're in the movie theater, and the guy comes in real late. I think he was just drunk. Is the final end all of it. But he comes in, he's like, oh, Halloween, Halloween. And then the movie's already started. Oh, boy. Then he walks down to the front under the screen where that little door is. Yes. And the door open. You can't see him. He disappears. You just see that light come in. So the door is open, which is how the Aurora shoot had happened. Is that right? Yeah, he propped the door and then parked out there and then fucking opened the door. So this is like how somebody has shot up a movie. Oh, Typically, that's God. a white person activity but sure so i'm like what's going on over there maybe he's seeking in a friend but i'm like a little anxious i'm an anxious guy anyways plus i got the m&ms and soda coursing through my veins yeah a little sugar high yeah and uh it's about three minutes that door is cracked open he re-emerges sits in the front row uh. then he gets up about eight minutes later walks back <laughs> oh through the thing and then leaves the theater i'm like god i hope he doesn't come back yeah. i'm really nervous you, you can't know? enjoy the move i can't enjoy the movie and it's a spooky movie anyway yes he comes back a few minutes later now he's got like a pizza box and like a couple of some candies some jujubes and a fruit basket he's got a bunch of snacks yeah. arms full now he sits in like the fourth row and he's just standing in front of the screen what slowly putting his stuff down pizza and he starts emptying his pockets once again i'm like what's he pulling out of his pocket yes. is that a gun i'm Holy nervous shit. but it turns out i think he was just high and drunk i think yeah. he must have been at a different movie and kind of snuck into this one mm-hmm. and there was a few times he was like max katie he kept being like oh oh man oh, oh, oh. Like doing these weird stuff. Yeah, well, it was spooky as fuck. I think very open minded of you to think that a person of any race could be a shooter. Well, these white people are shooting up these movies. Sure, more but often. Hey. Oh, yeah. it's only happened a couple of times, also. But time for a change, I say. But you never know. So it was uh, pretty scary. But anyways, movie was great. And then we walked back, and it was misty. I love that misty air. Oh, I love a misty. Walked back and uh, beautiful hotel, the whole thing, and um, it was great. Yeah, great weekend. Happy great to be back. weekend. Back on Sunday. Back on Sunday afternoon, and then we hung out with uh, Sarah's mother was in town. We went and saw the Meyerowitz story, Meyerowitz, however you say it. Yeah. And uh, great night. Went to the cellar. Hot crowd. All right. Fun. Great. But uh, well, it's good sorry. We, we did too much bullshitting. I'm sorry. No, I, that was fun. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just pop a few of these nuggets in. Mushrooms? Uh, yes. I'm about to get high, folks. No, no. But uh, I, I uh, was doing the Royal Oak Comedy Castle in, in Michigan. Plenty of Tuesdays there. A lot of Tuesdays. About 20 minutes outside of Detroit, Motor mm-hmm. City, the big D. And uh, so, but this guy hit up my agent, Trent. Great guy. And he goes, hey, you want to do this uh, gig like a like a FW kind of bingo hall type thing? I'll pay you a couple bucks. And I was like, fuck it. I'll go in a day early. So I go to this thing. He picks me up at the airport. Killer gig. Sold out like 160 people. Middle of nowhere. I'm talking sticks. And uh, he, you know, he brings me to this thing. We get some grub. I meet some local comics. This guy Wes, uh, Brett, Carl. They all open for me. They host. 
Killer! Kill. It was like, you know that feeling when you're killing in the middle of nowhere and you're like, I wish somebody could see this. Of course, I yes. I wish this was out there. I'm like riffing. I'm like, ah, look at that. A couple of Duck Dynasty. All these, you know, easy jokes. But they're, ah, they're loving it. I love that. Oh, yeah. And you're like, man, I wish people could see me in the middle of hell just ripping it up. I feel that way all the time. Yeah. I feel that way sexually. I'm eating yes. a pussy. I'm like, if you guys, all my exes could see this, all right. two of them. <laughs> right. It's like that Bill Burke quote. He said, I'm killing in obscurity. Ah. Yeah, no one knows. But then you're like, fuck it. This is, what, this is what I do, baby. I don't need everybody to see it. So, yeah, you get on that. And then, then we just hung out. And we had a great night. And me and Trent went to a bar after. And it was just the middle of nowhere on Main Street at some bar. They're blaring music. Everybody's shit-faced. It was great. Nobody had teeth. And uh, so then he's like, hey, I got you a room in this bed and breakfast. They give us a free room. And I was like, great. All right. So we go there. This woman goes, here's your key. I'm leaving. You have the place to yourself. And this is like old school you know, doilies, plastic on the furniture, like cre- creaky, rickety old house. I love those places. I like it too, but I got to tell you, with the clerk chick gone, and it was just me, there's zero other – she's like, there's no tenants, or it's a slow season. You got oh, the whole wow. place to yourself. And it's Halloween. And it's Halloween. I'm in the Woo. middle of nowhere, and it's spooky and foggy and gay. So I'm like, all right, well, this will be cool. And she's like, there's snacks here. There's food in the fridge. I was like, oh, fuck, awesome. So – I do the gig. I have a couple beers and a few whiskeys. I'm like, ah, I'm just going to go to bed. So I, I steal some snacks, and I go up to my room, and I lock the door. And I'm like, oh, I want to watch the Spielberg doc. So I pull out my laptop out of my bag. I get in my underwear, my panties, and uh, I put the uh, the Spielberg doc on. The Wi-Fi's not working. Ah, of so course go, not. Fuck, the Wi-Fi's not working. This place is from 1808. So now I, I, I go, all right, be a man. Go downstairs, find the router. Plug it in, unplug it, do what you got to do, and you can enjoy the movie. And I go, I can't. I'm too scared. I can't go down there. And then I get a text from Trent, and he goes, just letting you know, the old there's an old man in the basement. He lives down there. What? And I go, what the fuck? You kidding? There's an old man down there? Oh, my he goes, God. He's asleep. You want to hear? I'm just letting you know in case you hear like a sneeze or something. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Thank God you told me. So I go, all right, well, there's an old man down there. Fuck it. You're 34. Get your fucking fat ass up and go find the router. So the whole house is dark. So I just unlock that door. I got my Mack Weldon panties on. I got a little nightie and a teddy. I got a candle and a, and a, and a sleep hat. And I go out into the hallway and just... And I'm looking. All the, all the doors are open to all the other rooms. And it's just dark in there. And there's oh. dolls and big weird bedspreads and shit. I'm like, God damn. Fucking nuts! I don't I'm like so, this one bit. I'm so scared. I go, I go down one step at a time. You know, it's dark. It's freaky. All this old furniture, like pictures on the wall, like black and white photos of some racist from 1940 or whatever. And I'm like, God damn! So I finally get downstairs. I'm in the kitchen. The kitchen's all right. I feel safe in the kitchen. And I look in this room, and it's a dining room. And I just look at, and I see a clown. What? There's a clown sitting Come on. in a chair. I mean, there isn't, but in my head, I see a clown. Oh, you see a clown. I just see a clown sitting at a table eating. I guess I have a fear of clowns. It's a clown vision. Yes. A clown mirage. A mirage. A bozo mirage. And I'm just like, I must be scared of clowns. And I, I just, I kind of back up and I go, all right, what are you doing? There's no clown in there. There's nobody here. Go get the fucking router. Stop being a wuss. And I go, all right. So I'm just looking through the house. You never know where a router could be. It could be in a corner. It could be up my ass. It could be in the fridge. I don't know. So I'm looking everywhere for a router. Finally, I just start opening doors. And opening doors is scary because you just feel like something's going to like a raccoon's going to jump on this you. This is insane. I would just wait a day to watch the movie tomorrow. Well, I was so bored. I had a couple beers in me. I don't know. I just wanted to watch the movie. And then I had the whole, like, just man up here. Jesus. Uh-huh. So I had that whole thing going through me. So finally I open a door. And I found the router. Oh, thank God. I think it was the router. It was a big box with bleeps and boops and lights. And I was like, this must be it. So I unplug it. I plug it back in. I slam that door. And I run back upstairs like a little schoolgirl that I am. I get back in bed. I lock the door. And I watch the dock. Then the Wi-Fi goes out like 10 minutes in. Oh, my God. It's that clown. It's the clown. He's probably juggling with it. Oh, God. Just you saying that freaks me out. So uh, I just said, fuck it. And rubbed one out to my porn on my phone. That's better. And then I went to bed. But uh, it was quite a moment. And I woke up and I got up early. And the bre- I made my own breakfast. It was amazing. I was thinking about this last It's funny you said that because I was writing about a fear of clowns last night. Is that right? Yeah. I got the paper to prove it. And uh, it's not just that they're scary. They're scary when you're a kid. Uh-huh. And then you realize, wow, clowns, it's not, that's something to be scary about. But then you realize the actual human beings that are clowns 
are also scary. They're fucked up this weirdos. This is like some guy that paints his face. And, yeah, big shoes, balloons. He's on a little bicycle. Get out of here. Yeah, he's scary, too. Yes. Well, the movie It just fucked me for life. It was, that's what it was. It was it the was It clown I kept seeing. I Pennywise. Think. That's the one. Great Tim band. Curry. Yeah. Also in Rocky Horror Picture Show. Called Class. So uh, then Trent wakes me up the next It's funny how when the morning comes, you're like, I'm not scared of that. It's all that night. It's the night. Under the cover of darkness. Thank you. Well, that's the thing is people... This is a joke in my head, but I had a nightlight for years. People were like, what, are you afraid of the dark? I'm like, no, I'm afraid of a guy fucking coming in and stealing me. In the it's dark. it's easier to hide in yes, the dark. Yes, exactly. It's like the dark is scary. You're afraid of what's in the dark. <laughs> yes. Yeah, not I'm not afraid dark. of the dark. When yeah. I close my eyes, it's dark. Right, right. Exactly. So we get out of there. He drives me all the way to uh, Royal Oak. We had a great time. Great guy, Trent. Appreciate it. And then I did the Comedy Castle, and it was just killer. And then me and this guy, Wes Ward, funny, really funny comic. He drove me to uh, Detroit. We had a Coney. They got the big Coney Island dogs. That's their big thing oh. in Detroit. So we had that. Saw some of Detroit. Uh, now I go, all right, I've had a Coney dog. I've been eating all this shitty breakfast at this, this fucking B&B. So I want to go to work out. So I walk my fat ass to the gym. It's like a 20-minute walk. You know, you're in the hotel in the middle of nowhere. I walk to the gym, the powerhouse gym. I get in there. There's this big Latino guy, and he goes, Hey, how can I help you, sir? I can't do the accent. And uh, I go, Hey, well, I'm in my jeans. I forgot my shorts. No shorts. So I go, Ah, can I just work out in jeans? He goes, No, but I have shorts. You can buy them. I'm like, All right, how much? He goes, thirty four ninety nine. Oh my god! I'm not spending thirty four ninety nine on shorts. I'm gonna wear one time. We can wear them another time. I guess that's true. But I got like thirty shorts in my house. Too many shorts at home. So I go, Fuck it. Let me just work out in jeans. He goes, Can't do it, Captain. I go, All right, blow me. I leave there. I go to fucking uh, Macy's. Macy's? I buy shorts. Those got to be a pretty penny. Well, there's a sale going on. I got some shorts for $9. Oh, wow. A Macy's sale. Then once I was there, I got a haircut. By this at Macy's? At Macy's. I got a haircut lady. No kidding. I did a whole thing. I'm here. I'm getting a haircut. Wow. So the haircut was 20 bucks. The shorts were 9 I've spent less than the shorts he was offering. Save money. Got a haircut. New shorts. Haircut shorts. And the lady cut my hair. Huge podcast fan. She what? never heard of ours. But she's like, oh, oh you following this sober October oh, with Burt Kreischer? I'm like, yeah, 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 I know Burt, funny guy. She knows Burt, but doesn't know us? No, no she knew Ari. Burt stinks, Ari blows. I know. And I Come was like, on. Get off of Ari, blow us. And she was like, oh, I'll give it a shot. Never heard from her again. How about the tits? Nice tits? I picture in big tits. Asian lady, no tits. Oh, bummer. Yeah. Asian lady likes our podcast? Doesn't like our podcast. Likes, likes their podcast? other podcasts, yes. All right. Well, if you listen to ours, you might be horrified. That's true. We do do a whole thing on uh, Nagasaki. Do do. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was her name. So <laughs> we, uh, I leave there, hit the gym with my haircut, my new shorts, pile on some meat, some uh, mass, and then go do the shows. I had some of these. These shows were amazing. That, those crowds are great. Thanks for coming out, everybody. I got photos with everybody. Then I did a couple bar shows at the local scene. That was great. Everybody was great. We went to the diner. I got some flaming fries. Oh! That's a Michigan thing. Yeah. Uh, that guy that, from Shake Shack had some flaming fries. <laughs> yeah. Got some flaming fries. We went to this diner, all night diner, and this lady, he's like, we got to get the flaming fries. We got them. The lady comes out. She lights the skill on fire. It's a lot of fun. That sounds like fun. You hit that movie theater? I didn't have time. No, I did a bunch of it. podcasts with these cats and uh, did talking with Sammy. Check out all these pods. They're all unlaughable, actually. Laughable. And I had a great time in, in the Mish, in the Mitten State, they call oh, it. They yeah. Do? Or the Great Lake State. I have no idea. It's one of those. Either way, I'm gay. And uh, thanks for listening. How you doing? Me? I think we're good. I think we're done. I mean, right. we ran out of time here. I, I, we took up too much time with all the business, but uh, it, was it was fun. The funny business. Ah, funny business. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think the Coney Dog, Tuesday. Oh, I went to Qdoba out there. I love Qdoba. I did, too. I go occasionally. Sometimes their chicken tastes a little bit like... Uh, rubber? Cubes. Yeah, like yeah. little rubber cubes. Oh, uh, yeah. A little, little uh, Firestone-y. A rubber cube is not a sneaky 50. It's no, a finger no. over the glass. Yes. Rubber um, cube's not a bad one, either. That guy's a real rubber cube. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Shall All we? right. Well, we got to uh, put our pants back on here. Hey, don't forget uh, November 
8th, for God's sakes, make the trip. If you're anywhere in the tri-state area or fly in, whatever you're going to do, we're doing a live Tuesdays with Stories at 11 p.m. Yes. Not exactly prime time, but it's part of the festival. We've only sold about nine tickets, so for God's sakes, come to that show. Come on out. It'll fill up before you know it. Then you'll be mad you didn't buy. Exactly. And then uh, that Sunday, PS109, New York Comedy Festival. Uh, we're doing a, it's a secret lineup, but uh, you know Ari Shafir and myself and Cantor will be on it, and we already gave away the secret one of our secret guests. He's sitting across from me right now with his Ooh. legs crossed. It'll get better from there, folks. So uh, come to that. Well, I'm not going to promise anything. That's true. Uh, and then November 16th, Charlottesville. I'm doing the Southern, and uh, oh, I think good, uh, good. Alan really put his neck out for me. So we need someone to come to that show for good God's room. Sakes. Go to that, folks. I, I had a, a lot of people come out, and I still didn't make a lot of money, but uh, it was you'll you'll have a good turnout. Yeah, and if you go to my website, comedianjoelist.com, you can check out my late night sets, and you can buy a ticket. The links are all there. It took a lot of work to put those links up, so please go right? do that. Well, a lot of work to me. You copy and paste. I know, but that's a lot to me. All you got to right. copy and paste, and it's a whole thing. So go to the website, Comedian Joe List, Charlottesville, November 16th, live podcast, November 8th, laughable app. Tell them where you'll be, Mark. Hey, 9090, does this come out tomorrow? Sure does. Oh, great. Well, tomorrow or this whole weekend, Thursday through Sunday, I'm at Zany's in Chicago, one of my favorite clubs, favorite cities. And uh, come on out and say hello. I'm going to be jumping around. Maybe I'll do a little Laugh Factory, maybe do some bar shows. So it's going to be a wild weekend. I'm going to be all over the road. Then I'm in Helium, St. Louis. Always uh, wanted to go to St. Louis. Never been. Love an arch. French. Sacramento. Punchline. Then I'm at Laughs Comedy Club in Seattle. I might have Stavros open for me if he can get in there. Oh, I'll tell Derek to come. Do they use locals over there? Or can I get Stavros in? I don't know. I'll email your agent and manager about that one. I will. All right. A little come town before a Tuesday. Uh, then I'm at Edmonton Comic Strip. That's going to be a cold weekend. Connor McDavid. San Francisco after that. Uh, a lot of fun stuff cut up. Comedy Connection in Rhode Island. Uh, then we're at the Funny Bone in Albany. And the Mohegan Sun for New Year's. Oh, yeah. Then we're at Laugh It Up Poughkeepsie in January. January 5th. Yeah. Is that the 5th? I believe so. It is the 5th. You're right. It's a Friday. And then we're at, uh, maybe we'll do some Ari shows in Denver. Oh, yeah. Good nights in oh, Raleigh. Yeah. We finally got the good nights. So, uh, yeah, come on out. Get a shirt. The shirts are selling like hotcakes, apparently. I go all over the country. We're seeing them. Yeah. A lot oh, of people with the original, too, which is nice to see. Yeah, go go to, uh, what the fuck is the web? Merch Pump. Merch Pump. Dot com. Check, get a shirt, for God's sakes. And uh, the Patreon. I just put a queef up today. Yeah, let's go do a queef. Yeah, we'll do a queef. We'll do a Chipotle queef. And, uh, yeah, hit the Patreon. The Patreon is big. And then this weekend, I'm at Rooster Teeth Feathers, Thursday oh. through Sunday. Yeah, there every weekend. All right, I love you. I'm gay. Yell at Chipotle. Praise Allah. And uh, hit the Facebook fan page. Tweet at us. We love you, anal. Mm-hmm.